Agriculture Science Building at Utah State University, the Campbell Scientific Collection, you ready? all the very distinguished coaching career at Utah State University of Stuart. Okay, welcome to uh, today's press conference, everyone. Thank you for coming. My name is Doug Hoffman. I'm the Media Relations Director in the Athletics Department. Uh, I'm going to just start it off by introducing our Vice President and Director of Athletics, Scott Barnes. Thank you for all being here uh, today. Although today is, uh, it sadly marks the end of a phenomenal era, it also uh, celebrates the beginning of uh, a legacy that uh, Coach Morrill has left, uh, an unbelievable legacy. You, as you all know, he'll be announcing his retirement commencing at the end of this year. Stewart has been talking for weeks about his decision and uh, when, when he finally decided that that was the best thing to do, he also told me that he had uh, peace about it. This was further confirmed when he told me that yesterday he hadn't changed his mind even after Colette hit that three-pointer at Boise State <laughs> to win a, a big road game. I was a little disappointed. I hope he had changed his mind. Think about the 17 years at... Utah State, and you think about today's college athletics and how hard it is to be consistent uh, in, in staying on top uh, as it relates to success on the court and, and in graduating your student athletes. And to do that at one place is, is absolutely remarkable. Further, you think about the transition that uh, we've asked Stu to undertake over the years from the Big West to the WAC. Oh, by the way, four straight championships there. And now the Mountain West, where he indeed has left the table uh, full for the next uh, coach to come uh, to Utah State. Let's talk about his highlights over the period of time. There have been many, including seven conference championships. I mentioned the four straight WAC titles. Five-time Coach of the Year honors. He's coached four All-Americans and three players of the years in the WAC conference. Oh, by the way, he's the one of 14 active coaches that have won over 600 games. He's got 611, and we're working on a few more, Coach, right before this thing ends. <laughs> no doubt. Let me sum it up this way. The big fella has won big. He's won big on the court. We know uh, the success he's had. He's won big in graduating as student athletes. And he's won big because over a period of 17 years, he has operated his program with impeccable integrity. So when you think about Stu Morrill, you think about it being synonymous with Utah State basketball. Coach Morrill will forever go down in the history as the greatest coach to ever walk the sidelines of the Smith spectrum. Furthermore, he will finish his career as one of the finest college basketball coaches in the country. With that, I want to invite up to uh, say a few words the chairman of the Board of Trustees, Ron Gibson, followed by President Albrecht with a very special announcement. Ron? <coughs> Well, thank you, Scott, and uh, all of you here. Good afternoon. Uh, I can tell you this is a, a very mixed emotion uh, opportunity, but what an honor it is for me to represent our Board of Trustees, all of which are with us today, in uh, recognizing a great man and equally great coach. And uh, we appreciate uh, Coach Morrill and the uh, tremendous 17-year career that he's had at Utah State. I think uh, it's easy for all of us to see the fingerprints uh, on our university, on our community, uh, on our alumni, our students, and uh, certainly our athletes. And uh, as the uh, young man that uh, Coach Morrill has coached over these many years, uh, I can guarantee you that he's not only changed lives, but he's made lives better. And he's done that through being a tremendous coach, 
but way beyond that, a tremendous mentor, a uh, role model, an example of, uh, of what young men should grow up to be. And it's obvious from uh, Coach's uh, personal life as well as his coaching life. And so, Coach, as a board, we want you to know how much we appreciate your efforts and the impact you've had on lives that uh, will be changed forever because of your impact. I uh, just quickly had an interesting opportunity last night as I was in Spokane, Washington and was invited to attend the uh, Gonzaga USF game. And uh, they had a pre-reception and I, uh, several people, it was announced in this pre-reception that I was affiliated with Utah State University. And I, from that point on, throughout the entire night, had a constant line of people who came up to me and said, the next time you see Coach Morrill, tell him hello for me. I've got a pocket full of business cards. And uh, this was from past players that played with Coach, with, uh, with individuals that are athletic directors currently there, uh, roommates back in the Gonzaga days. So I can tell you that uh, Coach Morrill's impact goes way beyond just Utah State University. And throughout his life as a player and, uh, and beyond with everything he's done, he's represented all of us very, very well and uh, left a tremendous legacy. So thank you, Coach. Good luck to you. And uh, we've still got a good year to go here. We met in this room a few months ago with uh, lots of media attention and spotlights, and uh, it was a day of celebration as we announced Utah State University's entry into the Mountain West Conference. I have to tell you that this afternoon is, is much more bittersweet for me, uh, much more challenging, but I would like to just add my personal thanks as well as the thanks of the university to, to Coach Stu for uh, his great service to this institution. I know for many of us in Cache Valley, the winters have uh, been made much more bearable because of Stu's basketball program. Didn't matter how cold and foggy it was outside, we could go to a game in the spectrum and experience the spectrum magic and life was good, everything else was okay. We appreciated that. Uh, I, have, I have really appreciated uh, sort of the ah shucks uh, understatement <laughs> that so often reflected this man. I remember a conversation with him a few years ago when he was talking about this guard that he'd recruited by the name of J.C. Carroll and said, well, he can shoot a little bit, but he can't guard a chair. <laughs> and, uh, and I've always thought about that, Stu. And I, I, I can't tell you how many seasons at the beginning of the season that when we've had conversations with him, I, I've expected that we wouldn't win a single game all year. And then at the end of the season, we're in the championship game again. And so the master of the understatement. But in terms of, in terms of what he has brought to us, uh, and when I say what he has brought to us, what he and Vicky have brought to us, this, this community is a better place because of them. And I don't think that there are many in this room who understand the larger behind-the-scenes impact that the two have had on our community, on our university, and perhaps more important, on the lives of so many individuals. Uh, Stu taught a whole lot of young men how to play basketball, but he also taught a whole lot of young men how to live lives. And... Uh, I think over the years that will end up being perhaps the greatest of, of his legacies. One of the things that I've personally appreciated in a, in a world, and Scott made reference to this, but uh, where we have so much change in athletics and uh, being realistic in terms of where different programs, including ours, are in a larger national food chain, the kind of loyalty that uh, Stu has reflected in staying at Utah State University when there have been lots of opportunities to be at other places and probably made a whole lot more money at some of those other places. But he stayed with us. And so during, during challenging times in many ways, he was Utah State University Athletics in the kind of model, both in terms of how he, how he lived his life, in terms of how he coached, but in terms of loyalty to the institution. Has, has made a really huge difference. And so coach, loyalty, integrity, legacy, all of those are important concepts that will very much be a part of, of who you are, and uh, Utah State is better because of that. I, 
you know, I met early this morning with our Board of Trustees and Executive Committee, and uh, part of the reason for the Executive Committee was to tell them about this press conference that was coming later in the day. And we get about halfway through that conference, and one of the members of the board said, it's already all over ESPN. And so what, what we thought was going to be an announcement maybe ended up being less of an announcement. But there is a part that is still a bit of a surprise to most of you. I, I am deeply honored to inform you that uh, at our commencement in May, first weekend of May of this year, our commencement speaker will be one Stu Morrill. <laughs> Stu. Okay, we're going to try and get through this. Um, you know, I, I tease Vicki all the time that uh, the definition for her of retirement is, <laughs> and she's about to find out, <laughs> not enough money and too much husband. <laughs> that's, that's what she's in for. Um, you know, there's a, a book out... Uh, Recently, for better or for worse, but not for lunch, a guide to retirement. Uh, so I'm already planning on not being home at lunch. So, uh, you know, I I watched a movie the other day called League of Our Own, and Tom Hanks in there is no crying in baseball. Remember that? No crying. There's no crying in baseball. Well, there shouldn't be any crying in this too, but uh, we'll we'll see how I do. Uh, you know, I want you to know, I want the media to know, and, and I know there'll be all kinds of speculation. That's the nature of this, and this this is my decision. I had a few years left on a contract. I went to Scott about a month ago, as he said, and uh, it, it just, uh, it, it just, it's just time. It, it's the right time. You know, it's, uh, who gets to stay 17 years anymore in one place? I mean... What what a wonderful thing for me and for my family to get to stay at Utah State for 17 years. Um, I really would have preferred. I asked Scott and the president if we could if we could do this in a release form. You know, just uh, you know the releases where you give a couple quotes. I'd have been I'd have been good. Um, that would have been a heck of a lot easier than than trying to trying to do this. But uh, they said no, and. Uh, at least for a few months, they can tell me no. So, um, you know, as far as the commencement speaking, what a what an honor! Um, uh, just unbelievable honor. And I, you know, I'm kind of like the guy that gets a Christmas bonus, knows he really doesn't deserve it, but not going to give it back. <laughs> so, I will take that honor and hopefully be able to tell the graduates uh, something that makes a, a little sense to them. You know, just a, just a little bit on on what what I'm proud of. Uh, sorry. We ran a basketball program. We're still running a basketball program. The right way, in my mind. And I've got peace with that. Uh, we graduated our players at a high level. We didn't cheat. <laughs> and believe it or not, that's going on a little bit around the country. Uh, just a little bit. We didn't do that. We didn't break NC2A rules. Uh, and we won enough games to keep working. So uh, I'm proud of that. I feel good about that. And as I told our players, you know, this is how stupid I am, okay? This will probably come out. I mean, I thought we were, we, we'd kind of been trying to keep this thing under wraps, and I thought we were pretty good. I thought we'd done pretty good, you know? And so we get back from Fresno, and I think about getting my guys in the next morning about 7 a.m., and but they've been traveling all day, and I want them to have some energy for the New Mexico game. And so I don't bring them in this morning at 7 o'clock and tell them. Um, I wait till noon. <laughs> Guess what? They already knew. 
they already knew, and I, I apologized to them. I felt bad about it. I uh, told them I'm not a real uh, expert at this social media stuff, so I kind of overlooked that it would it would be assumed and be out there a little bit. Um, this is a good group. This group I'm finishing with, they're trying hard. You know, they're trying hard. We're uh, we're young, we're inexperienced, and it's just, as I told them, I'm just so pleased to be finishing with this group of kids. Uh, I don't know how they'll finish the rest of the way, but we're going to have some fun, and we're going to play hard, and we're going to see what we can do. Um, and one thing I think they were concerned about that maybe I can explain to you is this uh, – it's time, and it's the right time. And somebody might under, wonder about the timing of this right now. I think it gives. I think it's great for the university because uh, it gives the university Scott a chance, the president, uh, to go get the next coach and have it done. Uh, I told Scott yesterday when he was talking to me in my office that before I head to the Mountain West tournament, assuming that we're not good enough to go postseason, if we are good enough, then I'm going to keep that office a little longer. Have you seen that office? <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you what, that is an office uh, as good as there probably is anywhere on campus, and I've only got to have it for a few months. But if we're, if we're uh, you know, if we're about done, I told him the office will be cleaned out, you know, and that'll probably be hard. But um, this, doing it at this time, allows the university to move forward, and that's important to me. That's important to me. It allows some time for my assistant coaches, uh, you know, I, 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 that's tough. That's as tough as it gets. You know, they've been, they've been unbelievable. And uh, hopefully it allows them some time, um, you know, to, to look at uh, some things. And I, I thought it made sense for the players, although after, after meeting with them, I'm not so sure. They were, uh, they were good. They're good kids. But uh, I thought it, you know, allowed them to adjust and, and all that. So I, I thought the timing kind of kind of made sense. One thing you got to know Nobody's mad at anybody, okay? Nobody's, you know, I don't, no, no matter what anybody says, you're hearing it from me, I'm not mad at them. They've treated me awesome uh, in this whole process, my career here, and I don't think they're mad at me if you just listen to them. Uh, I mean, I don't think so. So don't, uh, don't let anybody, uh, anybody tell you that. Uh, I need to say thanks. To all of you for coming, for one thing. Um, but about 32 years ago, I uh, had my best recruit. She's sitting right there. That was, as the saying goes, I definitely outkicked my coverage <laughs> on that one. And to her and my family who have supported me, my children, my Nephews, nieces, everybody that's been so good to me through this career, I am forever thankful of that support. To our administration, uh, the President, Scott, you know, I, I heard it recently quoted uh, that uh, we had the, I'm moving things around up here, the best, best AD and the best president in the universe. Who was that that said that? Is Matt Wells here? Uh, and uh, I love that comment. That was a wonderful comment. But do we have presidents and ADs on Mars? I'm just, <laughs> I'm just All I can tell you is I've had a lot of presidents and ADs. You better hang on to these two as long as you can. Uh, they're, they're as good as it gets. They're as good as I've ever had. And uh, I'm very appreciative of, uh, you know, of, of having them as my president, as my AD. Um, the president was supposed to retire with me, and I'm dang glad he's not. You know, we had that agreement, what, President Albrecht, about 10 years ago? A few years ago, five years ago. But uh, good for the university that they're both uh, still here. I um, want to thank all the guys who played for me. Uh, boy, I've had a lot of good players. I've had a lot of great kids. And I want to thank the players who have played me for me that, that like playing for me and also the ones who didn't. Uh, it's all part of it. I mean, it's all part of it. It's all part of the journey. Um, thanks to the, to the great boosters at Utah State. Uh, especially in particular, I want to 
say thanks to Mike Parson and Jim Law for all they've done for our basketball program. Parson, are you here? Parson never comes to these things. No, he's not here, but special thanks to them. To the fans, it's been a, been a fun ride. Special thanks to the fans, the ones who liked me and the ones who didn't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all part of the journey. As I told our players, uh, coaching's hard, isn't it, Rod? <laughs> coaching's hard. Uh, you know, 29 years to head coach, 40 years in the business. Um, it's it's okay now if I can go spend some time with my grandkids. Uh, Vicky, as I said, is going to get real tired of me. But uh, it's just time for – I've always thought maybe have a little time on the back end of this deal called life. You know, when I finish coaching, have a little time. Thought I might coach till, till I was about 50. Boy, that came fast. <laughs> just Some of us know, zoomed on by. Um, I do feel bad that, uh, you know, these kids you recruit and you plan on seeing them through and you plan on being their coach. And, um, you know, I do think a new voice will be good for them. They'll, it, it'll all work out. And that's what I tried to reassure them. It'll all work out. They're playing at a great place in a really good league. And a new voice will be positive for the university, for the fans, for the players. Uh, it's, it's time for a new voice, maybe past time, but... I hung on for a while, so, um, and I reassured our players if if I was if I was just wanting to be done and quit on them, I'd have been done today. Uh, I don't want to do that. I want to do it right. I want to finish the season, see what we can do, um, you know, and see see where we can where we can go. Uh, but I guess before I open up for questions, I just tell you I've been a very lucky man to be at Utah State and just uh, so thrilled that not very many get to end their coaching career uh, retiring. I mean, it just doesn't happen very much anymore. So I, I feel very fortunate and thankful that uh, we're able to do it this way. And uh, Scott actually tried to talk me into staying another year. That was pretty nice of him. Um, I said I'd think about it. Came back two days later said, nope. <laughs> thought about it it's uh, it's it's time but thanks so much for you for for coming today um and i guess uh hoff where are you am i supposed to yeah if we have any questions from the media at this time for coach morrow we can take those coach what yeah, exactly Sean. did you did come to this decision or what was it something that's been building for i know you've talked about it at the end of every year you kind of have to reevaluate but when did that happen this decision well you know, it's. Uh, it does, I think anybody who coaches will tell you that if you if you decided at the end of every season, you probably would have quit twenty years ago because <laughs> because you're worn out and tired and disappointed because it almost always ends on a loss. Uh, but you always re you know kind of recharge and and all of that and you know that uh, is is a month or so ago uh, we I had hoped to do this we had kind of hoped to do this. Uh, but it doesn't really work with the holidays and everything. I'd hope to do it before conference started, um, so the timing's a little tough with the game tomorrow and all that, but uh, you, you got to do it when it makes sense. And uh, You know, I can't tell you exactly, Sean, when I knew for sure, um, but Vicky and I had lots of conversations, and I've, uh, I've known for a while that this is, this is a time to do it. Is there anything that stands out that you're most proud of when, when you look at, at the numbers that the legacy you're leaving behind? Good kids. Not the numbers. No. No. I, you know, somebody <laughs> pointed out that, gosh, you might have a chance to win 400 at Utah State. Uh, damn, somebody's counting that. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta go out every game and, you know, try. Come on now, man. I don't, let's not count that. If it happens, wonderful. But, um, no, I mean, you know, you, you you get some wins and it keeps you working, and you're you're always proud that you're able to win some games. But I've had so many high character kids, and I think that's what Utah State can be proud of. 
the kids that represented the university. Now, they're not all perfect. I mean, we all know that. But I've had a lot of high-character kids that have been wonderful to coach. And uh, I'm proud of how they're turning out. They're going to go out in life, and they're going to they're gonna make their way. You know, when you, when you have 13 guys on a roster, you sometimes will talk to your assistants, and you'll go, going to be okay, going to be okay, going to be okay. Whoa. <laughs> going to be okay. Uh, you know. And I've had very many woes. Mostly, mostly going to be okays. You know, and that's, uh, that's what you want. Just a lot of good kids. Coach, can you talk about, you, you're always telling me you're a, a hard guy to work for. Why have these assistants over the years worked for you as long as they have? I must not be that bad. <laughs> I mean, I must not be. You know, uh, Randy Ray stayed 13 years. Wow. Don Verlund, 15. Tim Duryea is the longest tenured assistant coach in Utah State history, 14 years. I would love to see him have a have an opportunity here. That'd be awesome. Um, I, I don't know, Lou. I, you know, I've been lucky. Those guys, I let them play golf. That's probably it. <laughs> they play golf with Lou a lot. You know, I'll go in there in the spring about 3 o'clock looking for them, can't find them. They're on the golf course. So I think that's kept them a little bit happy. Uh, you worry about those guys a lot right now, the ones that are, are going to be looking for employment and that sort of thing. So, Anything else? Stu, um, yeah, you always kind of talked about this a little bit, but you've always liked the spot and being a little bit under the radar. Um, yeah, which which was better, having a, being a little bit away removed from a lot of attention, or uh, did you, uh, you know, did you think you didn't get – didn't get treated fairly sometimes by the NCAA committee. It, it better be under the radar or better the other way. Are we talking about NCAA or are we talking about media? Yeah, I'd like to know both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I never once missed you guys. <laughs> uh, no, I, I like you guys fine, but I don't need to talk to you every second. I mean, and I know it's part of the job, but... Uh, you know, if you're in right in Salt Lake, you, you're probably dealing with a more. Believe it or not, when I was in Missoula, I walked out the court every day and had two TV stations. And, um, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's not all it's cracked up to be. As far as the NC2A, there was a time or two I thought they could have treated us a little better on the seed. You know, uh, uh, in the NC2A tournament, you start looking at our appearances while I was head coach, and we played the who's who of college basketball. You know, and then they want to get on me for not winning enough. Well, go play those people. It's not easy. You're a 15 and you're playing a two, or you're a. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a tough go. But uh, I thought the one team, the 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 last team that we took to the NC two A, should have been seated better. But you're always going to have those thoughts. I, I really don't have. Mostly, I joke. I don't have a lot of negative thoughts right now. I just don't. I don't think I will. I think I. I'm good. Some of you. Uh, you know, I, I, Mike Williams, I see you. I, I, there, there's Terrell. I mean, I, there's a lot of people here. Mildy. I mean, I just, I'm going to forget people. And, and uh, Rod, talking on the radio has been fun. Uh, you and I go way back. Uh, thanks, you know. Uh, coming up and telling me 9 and 5 was pretty good the other day, Dave. I like that. <laughs> he said this team could have been 5 and 9. Well, when you're an old coach trying to scratch out a few wins, that's pretty nice. Thank you. I mean, any anything like that's been great. Coach, do you think it will change the way you finish this year as a coach? I mean, obviously you've got a way you do things. Do you think you coach any differently the rest of the season? I hope so, but probably not. <laughs> I hope I'm a little nicer. You know, I should be a little nicer my last year, uh, but I probably won't be. <laughs> probably, you know, you get out there and practice starts and. You know, I tried to tell him today, you're going to get this new coach that's going to be a lot younger and he's going to be nicer and you're not going to have this big old gray-haired guy yelling at you. I said, what? it's going to be good. Just just, just, just feel good about it. It's going to all be good. So, now I, you get in competition and you're trying to win and, and you are the way you are. I mean, that's that's just it. 
mentioned spending more time with your family. Do you plan on staying here in Logan? And are you going to have any involvement in the game at all? Or are you just going to... I don't know. Just golf? No, I don't golf much anymore. If you've seen me play golf, you'd understand. Uh, I don't, you know, that's probably uh, the lady sitting behind you's biggest concern is what is he going to do? Um, I'll find something. We don't, we don't plan on rushing out and moving. We like Logan. Logan's a fabulous community. We all know that. It's a great university. It's a great place to be. Uh, the fact that we have children and grandchildren other places uh, may, may warrant that we move at some point, um, you know, if I can stay involved in the game in some way, might do that. Uh, you know, I. There, it's amazing. Maybe I could be one of those TV guys because they sure know a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm sure I'd get a lot smarter if I was one of those guys. Uh, you know, who knows? I'm, I'm talking. Huh? I'm talking about. i talking about the color commentators on games. I'm. Wow. Um, you know, I've coached against some of those guys, and boy, oh boy, I didn't remember they were as good as they remember they are. But <laughs> yeah, so uh, you know, I'll find I'll find some. We'll figure it out. We'll. I'm not, I'm not going to hurry. It's going to be nice to not have a buddy of mine say, "You know that list to do you've always had that's over there on you know on your, on your right. And there's 300 things on it, and you're scrambling to get them done. It'll be." It would be kind of nice not to have that list. It would be kind of nice. Stu, when you came here and left Colorado State, it was kind of a surprise to a lot of people, but you had a pretty good plan in mind about what you want to do and what could happen. Did you ever envision all this? No. No. I, I, I thought it was a really good job. You know, and I, I appreciated what Larry had done here, and, and I thought it was the best job in the Big West Conference and thought that we could win. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was coming home for me. It was coming home. Uh, yeah. What is a Utah kid from that other place down south? You know, I mean, who would have ever imagined you get to do this for a living? What a, it's hard, but it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And you call me the John Wayne of coaching shorts. I like that, Jeff. <laughs> I like John Wayne, so that was one of the nicer things anybody said about me. My wife won't watch those movies with me, but I still watch them. Coach, do you think you're going to have any input in your successor? That's not my deal. You know, I know that's not my deal. Uh, coaching the basketball team, running the basketball program has been my deal. If he asks me something, I'll answer it. <laughs> you know, um, but no, I that's... That's uh, the AD and the president's job, and I've always known that. I can have my opinions. Opinions are best left kept to yourself, probably. But anything else? I got to go to practice pretty quick, but <laughs> that is a bad term, and you do not like that term. No, you do this all the time. I know, but there are people that have told me I should find something different than that. Uh, <laughs> One of them being my wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, I will tell you that I didn't know. I, years ago, I couldn't think of anything else. It's called monster. So it's like I'm a big monster. All right. And it has to do with how we guard the post. That's all it is. And, and this one is our, something we do in our zone. And the little card that everybody's asked about for years. I've always got a little card. It's, you know, plays and, you know, just cues for me to remember during the game. When you're not very smart, you got to have help. You know, you got to have help. So. Coach, fans notice things like that about you. I went to Utah State when I went to basketball thing, games. I, all of the fans talked about these movements. I mean, it, how does it feel to know that you've had such an impact on the fans? Your time here. Well, I, I think it's really important that that I hung it up before t Stu turned into Boo. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and so that's no. If if I've been able to have an impact on anybody's life, that's a good thing. Stu, obviously, you've got a lot of memories 
in your years here. Is there any game memories that uh, maybe stand out that you cherish a little bit more than the others that you'll take with you and leave them? Obviously, there will be hundreds, but anything that really stands out? Oh, I always remember Tony Brown with the City League fake against Iowa, Ohio State. City League, Church League, whatever you want to call it. The guy jumps, finally. Tony Brown fakes him about eight times. Lofts it over. We go into overtime, and we beat Ohio State. I'll always remember that. Uh, there's a lot of memories, you know. Uh, some of the stuff Ty Wesley did, I just should forget. Uh, no. I love Ty Wesley. What a great player. But he was an Henri Cantacaris guy when he uh, for the opponents. Not with me. But... Uh, and that, you know, always in foul, you know, you, those kind of things you remember fondly. I don't want any anybody thinking badly at Ty. What a great kid! But you know, you you have to kind of go back. And Al went through a bunch of game winners the other day, and you'd, somebody'd have to do that for me to rank them because he went through a bunch of game winners that I'd kind of you had to look them up, didn't you, Lou? Yeah, you and I are about the same age. You're a little younger, so you have to look them up to remember them all. Again, thank you very much. Got to put up with me for a couple months. <laughs>